Are we live? We are live. We are live. Okay, look. We'll get a few seconds and let people kind of start dropping in. Let people join in. Uh, join on the live. Your mum's on. Okay, we're not naming people. We're not doing that. We're not giving anybody glory. That's not what it's about. Guys, um, obviously, you can't get away from it. We know what's going on in the world, and we know what's going on in the UK. Scotland, uh, this virus is kind of taking over everything that we do right now. As of now, uh, the King's Live Lounge will remain closed with no more live events or live content. We've had to pull 23 shows today, so, you know, there's a lot of people affected. Clearly, we are a charity. Uh, the King's Theatre project is a massive project, and... Um, we obviously are set to lose a lot of income that would go back into the charity and help the project as well. So, can't believe I'm getting upset. Um, it's been awesome. And if this is as far as it goes, it's been unreal. It's, uh, it's changed my life. To everybody that's come through the door, bought a drink over the bar, bought a ticket for a show. It's awesome, it means a lot. And uh, I'm sure we'll be fine, I'm sure we'll be fine. It's just tough. Guys, get in touch. Refunds, I've said it all, I'm not gonna keep going. Um, thanks very much. Founder of Rainbow Lion Wellbeing and collaborator on our lockdown film. Now, just over one year ago, I was out on my 30 minute maximum walk in the local area in Stirling, and I couldn't help thinking, I wonder what everyone's experiencing during this weird, strange, difficult time. I thought, wouldn't it be a good idea if people could film their experiences and we could collect them together? to show the shared experience of people in lockdown in Scotland. Now, a year later, may I present to you our lockdown. Enjoy! Get up for some reason, get clean for some reason, caffeinate and gaze into the hellscape in slack-jawed panic, flip a pancake, stare at a blank page blankly for an age, Black gold, breathe the fresh air as allocated, caffeinate, continue to procrastinate to top up existential dread with not a single worthwhile sentence in your head, you talentless hack. Have a nourishing snack, kick back and die in obscurity, probably soon. Eat the whole pot with a spoon, drink it down, delicious grape medicine, binge yourself into sweet oblivion, more snack, more grape, stay awake too late, flicking through the flickering pages of these new dark ages playing out in stages each more horrifying than the last. And with the daily tally of the dead screaming in your head, you go to bed, stare at the ceiling, feeling anything but sleepy, tired but too wired to fall deeply, too aware of your heart beating, sleep is fleeting, and before you've even dreamed, it's all repeating.
it is the end of Saturday? No, actually, it's the end of Sunday. It is currently Sunday. <sighs> I've done this again. Focus has tanked. Productivity has tanked. I don't want to do college coursework. I feel burnt out. I'm anxious as hell. All I want to do pretty much is play Animal Crossing and no that's it actually that's just it my brain just can't conceive that i still have to do things from the time before i went into self-isolation when everyone's lives was just turned upside down it just ain't happening chief structure schedule routines this is already a mess, isn't it? Hello there. Cheers. Before like, we start, I'd like to make it very, very clear that this is water and not gin. Um, I do not have any gin left. I <laughs> um, hope everyone is doing okay. I'm sure many of us at the beginning of 2020 uh, didn't envisage this has been how we would spend it. Being full of beans and full of energy one minute and being tired the next is quite um, disconcerting. Um, so for lockdown, I think for a lot of people lockdown has been quite challenging. Okay, right, you're in the house, you're not getting to leave the house. If you do leave the house, you need to conduct yourself in a certain amount of rules. You must follow the rules because we all want to go back to some sort of normality. But actually you're going to have to stay in and deal with your stuff. Um, and that for me has been very revolutionary. So, um, and I've discovered so much about myself. I don't know if that, that's a similar experience with a lot of people. But certainly I've found that for myself. Humour has been my go-to setting during the last four months. Um, I've needed, you know, and often a really mad cop sense of humour. Sometimes it doesn't make sense um, to anyone but myself, but I think that should be my way of coping. I don't know if anybody else is absolutely dying for a haircut at the moment. My hair is absolutely doing my head in. Because <laughs> there's only so many ways you, you can brush a mullet out. So I'm now, uh, I'm now at the top of St Clair Street, just coming off View Four Street, right? And uh, coming up past Aldi, Lidl, whatever it is, they're all, everybody's spacing outside the shop waiting to go in. A couple of people with masks, I've got my mask by the way, just in case I was going into any shops, got my mask. And uh, that's all cool. And then I noticed like, this wee old man, he's walking down towards me. And then he shouts to a boy across the road. Another old man. I'm pitting them. It gotta be late sixties. Gotta be late sixties. Maybe even seventies. Maybe maybe the category that's supposed to be in the house. Anyway. He crosses the road. Right up to him. Starts a wee chat. And then an old couple with a dug. I stopped to look at this, right? An old couple with a dug come walking up towards them and I thought 
They're going to make a beeline and go round them, eh? No. They stopped and started chatting. Hey, both of them, easily in their 70s, with this dog. The old boy was struggling to walk. Right up, start to hear a conversation. And they're all chatting away, blah, 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 like it's any other day. I can't believe this. So this is my first day out since Sunday. Sunday was my last day out. So I've been in the house since. I've been in the back garden. I've been dusting about. I made a banana loaf yesterday. Some of you might have seen that online. I'm going to hate swap M's. M's killing me. But here's the point, right? So, I've not been out. I've not seen any of these shenanigans. I've read about it online and stuff, eh? But I've not seen any of it. And now I'm witnessing it and I'm like, what the hell are people thinking? What? I didn't get it. I honestly do not get it. Just stay in your house. I tell you what, if I seen my gran going down my street, I'd be wrecked earlier. I mean, I'd have my mask on. And I'd be grounding her. <laughs> can we do that? Can we ground our grandparents? I'd be if we can. Hello, my name is Catherine Simpson. I'm a novelist and a memoir writer. I think people who uh, like crafting and have hobbies that they enjoy at home were particularly lucky in lockdown because we could just get cracking and do it and get the piece to do it. So I got the sewing machine out. Eventually I made some masks, but I started off by making bunting, lots of bunting with my mother's old material. I made about 50 yards of bunting to decorate my daughter's wedding party, which unfortunately has had to be postponed. Um, but I'm lucky because I can work from home because I'm a writer and I write here at this desk. Um, I've written a novel and uh, a memoir at this desk. And uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to, to enjoy the view right up Carlton Hill, right up to the monuments up there. And I've enjoyed looking at this view right through lockdown, watching it turn from spring into summer. One of the first things I did in lockdown was turn my old flower box into a catio for Cleo, who's loved lockdown, sitting out here looking at the magpies building a nest and admiring the view of Carlton Hill. I got my bike out and went cycling with my daughter Lara for the first time in 10 years because exercise suddenly seemed really important. And I've managed to keep up my yoga classes over Zoom. So that's been my lockdown. Time for lots of peace and quiet and some reflection because I've been lucky enough not to be a key worker who's had to go out and face the virus every day. We've been lucky that we've come through it relatively unscathed and I hope you have too. Neil Hanby. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, I will begin remarks tonight by paying tribute to my NHS colleagues, every key worker and every volunteer and vaccinator in my Kirkcaldy and Cowdenbeath constituency for their continued and tireless efforts. So this is, uh, this is how the world has seen me uh, through lockdown most of the time. Made a lot of appearances in the chamber um, this way. I've asked questions this way. Um, but I've also made it down to London a couple of times, but um, this is actually where I am um, in my office in the house, dressed for Parliament. Uh, I've got my uh, camera active here, I've got another camera there. But like everything during lockdown, things are not necessarily the way that they seem. So welcome to these woods. My name's Gavin Hugh. Uh, I'm one of the people who was pushing forward the Our Lockdown project over the last year. So I'm actually the guy who sat and uh, edited all of our lockdown. So if you're watching this um, and you think it's too long, you've got me to blame. You know, obviously I'm a filmmaker. Most of the time 
album and making stuff like this, I would have a big camera out, uh, maybe some lights, sound equipment. It's actually really liberating just to pick up a mobile phone and just shoot on a mobile phone. So one of the things about being kind of trapped in your local area is it really kind of gives you the opportunity to explore and get to know it a lot better. And something I really enjoyed um, has been discovering these woods, which I actually didn't even know existed. Lockdown gave me the opportunity to kind of explore this local area and see it in a new light. It's an amazing space. I mean, it's just, it's an amazing space. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I've enjoyed coming here and chilling out and kind of getting to know it a bit better. Sometimes I've had a rough day. Um, I want to come down here and just kind of like get some fresh air and chill out. Kind of relax. Um, it's nice. And I hope that wherever you are in Scotland or beyond, uh, being kind of confined to your local area has given you an opportunity to explore your own space as well and make the most of it and discover things maybe you didn't know about because I certainly have discovered things. It's been really rewarding getting to know these woods. Yeah. Very peaceful. My private life was pretty challenging even before the COVID-19 and you know lockdown. Uh, a few things happened in my life. My uh, wife was on the maternity leave. At the same time, uh, my daughter uh, was admitted to the hospital. Uh, but uh, yeah, that was something which was really worried us. Just before the lockdown, my son uh, born. Um, that was a home delivery. <laughs> we didn't plan it. That just happened. Uh, so the beginning of the lockdown, you know, my wife spent in the hospital. I'm professionally helping small medium enterprises to be more adaptable, more responsive to the to the changing business environment, to the uh, changing world around them. And COVID-19, you know, changed a lot. Many of my clients uh, had to stop the operations. Something unexpected is is happening. We can choose at least two options. You can we have we have two options. And the first option is we can say, oh, I'm little poor me. I'm I'm so so poor. This is so bad. And you know, why does it happening? Why does it happen to me? Or alternatively, we can say, okay, this is how the world looks like now. I don't like it, but that's the reality. What um what am I going to do about it? Well, obviously, I choose the the second option. So I started to be quite excited uh, because always when big change come, and always if something is changing, even if the change is very challenging. Even there is a lot of worries, troubles, there is always an opportunity. And it's only up to us whether we are able to, to see it or not. The best strategy is probably to explore. Exploration, you know, this is like a trip to the jungle. You have no idea what will, what will happen, but for sure something interesting will happen. So let's enjoy it, okay? I started to deliver a f um, free sessions, COVID-19 brainstorm sessions to, to help them to, to, to get out of it. Pretty happy because, you know, about probably 80% of, of the people which I spoke with, uh, they definitely changed the approach. They started to look for the opportunities rather than trying to, to hibernate or, or being sad that, you know, <laughs> the, the world doesn't work anymore as they would like to. Yeah, it gives me a lot of positive energy and motivation, you know, and that was pretty good experience. And right in the middle, in the middle of lockdown, I started to make some money, which is pretty good and which helps, which definitely helps that time. You know, we spent a lot of good time with family and we, we were able to manage with, with lockdown as a family, which was very important. And well, I spent very dynamic time in my business, which was pretty good as well. I really enjoy it.
and this is my working from home. A view, quite important to have light in. And don't forget the very important cup of tea and water. It's a bit different. But I'm very fortunate and a lot of people are able to do that. I am a screenwriter and filmmaker living in Fife, Scotland, and this is where I've been spending most of my time during the lockdown. I come sit at my desk around 11am every day and try to be in some way productive or creative, or hopefully both. I don't always manage it. My favourite thing about this room is the view. I don't have a garden, but what I do have is this beautiful, ever-changing patch of sky and life that stops me from ever feeling hemmed in, despite being in isolation. There's always something to see out there. A family whizzing past on their bikes, the cat that sits in the neighbour's window, the old couple who walk past every day around lunchtime, holding hands. You start to really appreciate the little things. The church is shut now, but the caretaker, an old chap who must be in his 80s, still comes along every Thursday morning like clockwork to look after the garden, so it's all still ship-shape when the services start up again. Who knows when? And you can just about see on the corner there, opposite the gallery, Bogart's Pub. The kind of place where the same old faces sit at the bar, day in, day out, drinking pints of whatever's on draft. Their lives have probably changed most of all. I often wonder how they're coping. But my favourite thing that I can see are these cherry blossom trees, which only bloomed a few days ago. The idea that nature still follows its usual gentle rhythms, even though everything else has come to a stop, is very comforting. I've been trying to write a poem about it, but this is all I've got so far. The cherry blossoms blooming still as ever, and they always will. That's usually how a poem comes to me. I'll get a little snippet like that, fully formed, and then the hard work is trying to build it into something bigger, to sort of fulfil the promise of that first nugget. And I often don't succeed, to be honest. Actually, maybe that one is better left, just as it is. Just a wee short one of the day. Leonie's here. Decided to combine our walk the day or time out and go to Asda. Again, I'm on here because I'm shocked. I, I, I'm disappointed. It's terrible. Obviously, you go and you're waiting your wee queue to go in and you're two metres apart. And you get in there and there's all these arrows on the floor and they're announcing on the tannoy, uh, you know, for the safety of the staff and the safety of us and all the rest of it at these times. Can you adhere to the two metre rule? And can you... Uh, stick to the following the arrows around the store. Now it's not hard, it's following arrows. There's probably less than half the folk in there actually able to follow an arrow. We've got a problem. I think we maybe got a problem with the education system. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe we didn't care what arrows are. It's like a normal walk to Asda, you can't Asda. The only difference is I waited in a queue to get in. And once you got in there, it was just free for all like normal. Ridiculous. Animals in a cage. Yeah, there's a reason why I do these lives. <laughs> and Leone does the get on them. I continue to work in a supermarket for my normal shifts at 22 hours and my partner was at home. Um, and this is this was the most time that we ever got to spend as a family. We have two young boys um, and he's never, my partner's never been at home as much. So it was just really good fun. Um, we have a beautiful big garden and we have some amazing areas that we could go and walk in. And we just spent our time outside, exploring the garden, exploring some walks. We've never had a chance to get on. It was a bit sad not being able to see people, but with regards to the fact that, you know, you can communicate so well online, um, you know, my children were still able to see their friends, their grandparents, um, so that was really nice. It's also, it was quite nice how it brought closer some friends, um, 
you know, friends that I would only see a couple times a year, we've had much more face-to-face -face communication in lockdown. Um, I feel that, you know, some birthdays and things have been celebrated, you know, not with people, but I've been a little bit more special because, you know, I know I've made an effort kind of to reach out to more people. Um, I've also started, uh, wrote to my grandparents, um, you know, with them being an older generation that don't have access to online. So, you know, we went back to communicating via writing, which was lovely. My volunteering roles, stuff like that, you know, we had quite busy lives and it was just stripped back and it was, it was so nice. And I do think, you know, I won't, we'll try and not be as busy from now on. You know, we'll try and just slow it down, enjoy what's right here in front of us and not, you know, be busy all the time. Why are we drawing rainbows, Russell? Mm -mm. Mm. Why? Is it to make people happy? Mm. Yeah, who are we going to send the rainbow to? One, two, three, four, what? People at my work, we, <coughs> yeah, that's right, we made rainbows. We're going to send it to people who might be a little bit sad. Yeah? Yeah. The rainbow make them happy. Red. Red. What colour's next? Mm. Yellow? No. Where's the yellow? Gone. What about pink? Pink. What about green? No. Green. Are you going to colour in the rainbow green? Yes. Yes. Green. Oh, wonderful. Is that purple? Yeah. Where's the green? What about blue? Blue. <laughs> right. I am sweet. recording now. Hi guys, how are you doing? Hi Lisa, fine, yeah. Hi Lisa. So how how are you finding lockdown, Gavin? Um well, I mean one thing we've all done on lockdown is quite a lot of these Zoom calls, Zoom quizzes. As much as I've enjoyed doing Zoom quizzes, I'd much rather meet people face to face. And um, it's not bad. I mean, I'm, I'm getting a lot of films watched and, you know, reading a lot of books and, you know, I'm being very productive, but um, I'm kind of at a point now where I want to, I want to see my friends and I want to like, you know, not be so confined to the house. How about you? Yeah, same. Uh, yeah, I, I find it quite tiring actually. You know, I think um, being on Zoom, I don't know if it's because of the bright light of the screen or what, but um, or just it's it's just a different kind of interaction, isn't it? Mm. Um, and and not having that that air, like sort of air of someone being in the room with you, I find yeah. that quite strange. And Lisa, how are you finding things? Interesting. <laughs> it's been an interesting year. I've done things I actually wouldn't plan to have done to have done. But I agree with you about it being tiring because it's almost like you're, you know, performing to a certain extent. Um, so I find when a call finishes, um, you're exhausted. And I cannot wait for coffee shops to open and bookshops to open and um, interaction with other people. I'm beyond excited about the library being opening. Just doing something normal that you would do. Pop see your friends face to face. You know, it's the simple things that we mm -hmm. kind of took for granted before, didn't we? Yeah. It's been quite eye-opening, I think, because we haven't been able to go out and do things like that. We've had to find other ways of keeping occupied, and um, which has been quite interesting, I think, because I think a lot of people are stuck, kind of just sitting, and they're having to think, or they're having to deal with maybe their family more than usual, or whoever it is they live with. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. Uh, it's a sort of situation where you've got to almost stay in the house and face your demons to a certain extent. So I think there's for a lot of people, and certainly myself, it's been a time of reflection, you know. Um, but I do think a lot of people are going to be coming out of lockdown very clear on what they're wanting to do mm. or what they're not wanting to do and who they're wanting to spend time with and what they're not, who they're not wanting to spend time with.
Do you think it's kind of, it's maybe actually made people a bit more resilient in some way? I think it's 50-50. I think, I think it's hard to say definitively um, that it's been, you know, a positive or a negative experience for people. It's just been a very unique experience. And some people thrive in their own company. I mean, I, I personally, I don't have any issue, you know, sitting with a book for a long time, you know, or, or going through my films or playing some games. Right? I enjoy that. But I think particularly for people who are quite extroverted and very social, um, this has probably been really tough. I actually really kind of enjoy and, and like the fact that I've got more time to think and be reflective and be introspective and kind of slow it down a little bit. And my fear is all of a sudden there's going to be this rush to catch up on lost time. You know, we have to meet up with this friend and we have to go and do this event and we have to do this and we have to do that. And all of a sudden we're going to overcompensate. Yeah, I, I think there'll be a lot of people who will find it quite hard to they might feel like oh I need, you know go out to the cinema or or um go to that party you know or what, whatever it might be but they might not feel able to after we've we've kind of got used to not seeing people um I sat down the other day and actually said out loud who have I actually seen <laughs> in the last year and I could count the people on my hand, you know. I'm the same as you, Gavin. I'm I'm quite introverted. I don't need to be around loads of people to um, to thrive and to to feel good. But at the same time, I like to spend time with people that I care about on a one to one basis, and I haven't been able to do that. Um, so I've I've felt, you know, that um, that kind of. Uh, struggle I suppose because previously I was quite introverted and went to a lot of social and cultural events because of the media stuff I do you know and at one point I was going to the opening of an envelope because it was it was involved in work so there's part of me that's actually enjoyed this time of quietness I've read more books in the last few months than I have in a long time um, and I've forgotten how much I enjoyed it it's just a simple pleasure reading a book. So yeah, there's there's been bits of this that's been been good. I hosted an event for On Fife. Never thought that's I'd do good. that via Zoom. Yeah. With, with four amazing creatives. Cool. Awesome. I did a training course over Zoom. That was that was pretty good. And it was good. Done a lot of Zoom quizzes and a lot of um. I, I've kind of like watched films with people. We've just hit the play button at the, at the same time in our different places and watched films together. That's, That's cool. Good. Yeah, I've done that. You've got less than a minute, guys. All right. Oh, we've got Should... a minute 30, 30, 30 seconds. Currently. Yeah. I got to meet my, my brother's new cat. He lives down in London, so I haven't been able to see him. And um, I've mostly used it for, well, chatting to you guys and sort and doing this project. Yeah. And... yeah. Doing a film in a pandemic. Yeah. We're going to get cut off any second. Aye, uh, my battery's just a bit... <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Let's start. Hi, everyone. I'm Tom. Oh. <laughs> Cocked up this intro so many times, it's embarrassing. Okay, let's just start. Hi, guys. My name's Tom Alna, and I'm the co-founder of Folk. And alongside my partner, Ludo, we have come up with this channel to give you guys a creative outlet during this difficult time. If you're a creative out there, whether that be a filmmaker, a musician, a chef, a painter, anyone that makes interesting things, we want you to share your stuff. The first thing you might be thinking is, well, how can I make interesting content if I'm stuck at home? Good question. I'm not expecting you to make The Irishman 2 while you're sitting around at home but you can be creative, and I'm setting myself a challenge to do that as much as I am to you. 
thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I hope to see your content on this channel very, very soon. That was terrifying. <laughs> thanks. Craig Gilbert and I'm Zen Life Fife. I run Mindfulness uh, in Fife. Being self-employed, um, I used to, before lockdown, travel on buses um, and go and visit people and share mindful practices uh, with individuals, with groups, uh, one-to-ones. So initially, when when this all went down, I was a bit, well, I'm not really sure how I'm going to manage uh, financially or, or in, you know in any shape or form how am I going to cope uh, with with the virus but it's a funny thing um, that when these things happen in life other opportunities come and I found that um, I've had to embrace uh, technology such as such as this start sharing mindfulness online with people um, and I've also had to do, um, I, I was commissioned, I was very lucky to be commissioned to do podcasts and videos. So it's an amazing thing that um, having a virus and having all this, this, this stuff happening actually in some ways um, made me go online and made me learn new techniques and to be, um, try at least to be comfortable in front of a screen talking. So that's been really good. It's been really positive in that regard. And um, I've also been doing a lot of writing um, and I've been enjoying um, actually this space, the, the, the way of being. I mean, mindfulness is all about being in the moment and just accepting where you are and um, enjoying just not doing. Yeah, I, I've been sitting in the garden. I've been relaxing. I've, I felt in some ways I've been on a mindfulness retreat. Uh, so it's actually been a very positive thing for me. I think my health has actually improved. Um, I've 
be meditating every day so I think my um, my levels of calmness have, have improved as well and so just to finish I'm gonna hit this bell and I invite you just to um, close your eyes and breathe feeling the in-breath feeling the out-breath just for a few moments and hopefully it will ground you so here we go Feeling the breath as you breathe in and feeling the breath as you breathe out. Today we are going to be doing an animal workout and for the warm up we are going to be using the elephant, the giraffe and the two sharks I have. Okay, so let's get started. The giraffe is this one. Okay, keep going. 20 seconds of the giraffe. Three, two, and one. Now let's take that to the elephant. <laughs> You teach them the shark. The shark is okay. Switch it to the other side, yeah. Okay, so we're warmed up and now we're ready to get into the workout. So the first thing we're doing is squats with rotation. So do you want the giraffe or the elephant for this? That's it. Taking me ten more. Nine. Penguin. This is the penguin. And this one is fast feet. What you want to do here is try to keep your upper body as still as you can and just move your feet. Right, you ready, steady, go. We've got a kangaroo for the kangaroo jumps. I'm gonna jump three steps forward. One, two, three, and I jump three back. Hi, I'm Anis and I'm a journalist in Fife. I have to say lockdown has been very challenging. I found it to be emotionally difficult at times. I've also found it to be a very lonely experience and I've also found it to be a real test of my resilience as a human being. But that said, I am very grateful to my immediate family for their love, care and their support over the last few months. Earlier in the lockdown, I, at home, did a head shave for charity Blood Bikes Scotland and I raised £150. The idea was not hugely planned weeks and weeks in advance, it was spontaneous and I decided to have my head shaved because frankly I looked absolutely ugly and I wanted to be better looking again. So I had the hair come off the top of my head and I felt much better afterwards and I felt even better after raising money for a very important cause. I am very grateful to Blood Bikes Scotland for the amazing work they have done during the coronavirus pandemic. Highlights of my head shave now. Remember, don't try this at home and please do donate to charity. Ah! <laughs> I'm shaving my hair off for charity. I'm doing it for Blood Bikes Scotland. They have done an incredible job during the coronavirus pandemic. It's time for me to be good looking again. This hair on top of my head is going, going, going! Or maybe not. <laughs>
the device is not doing what I want it to do. So here comes the scissors. This is the sixth time I have hit record. Um, yeah. Hi everyone, my name's Jess. I'm a music composer from Krakoti. Uh, I have a company called Arrow to the Knee Productions and I write music for video games and film. So most of the stuff that I did over lockdown was based around, well, my job as a music composer. Um, but I also had a second job, which was um, sort of tech support. And unfortunately that job came to an end because a lot of our courses and sort of work got canceled because of COVID. So that was a bit of a bummer. The good thing is it gave me more time to work on what I really wanted to do, which was music and will continue to do because it's ace. You ever just mucked up your sleeping pattern so badly that you start using blue drinks to write music with a terrible accent? <laughs> yeah, just me then. So I made a list of things that I did because I forget. Um, one of them was I wrote probably 30 new tracks over the course, which was good. I was approached by a production company and asked if I wanted to help uh, write some TV stuff, TV cues, so I've just started that. One of the biggest things that probably happened was that I managed to get myself a game credit on a game that comes out in Steam soon. It's a side-scroller platformer, it's quite Celtic-y, it's really pretty. And that was made by networking through Animal Crossing. The, uh, the lockdown game, as I'm calling it, because everybody started playing Animal Crossing right when we went into lockdown. And now I'm on the game. It's really cool. Um, none of that would have happened without playing Animal Crossing, I don't think. I also made friends with a Canadian composer called Jayla. She's really cool. Uh, we kind of kept each other going throughout lockdown by having like daily video calls, obviously different time, time zones, like five hours. Um, it kind of made things... Eh, it was alright. We managed to sync it up. I found lockdown to be challenging without seeing friends because I, I'm quite an extrovert, so I, I need people. But thankful because I live with my parents, so I'm not on my own. Did a lot of uh, Zoom calls with friends and just connecting online, mainly through Facebook. Mental health did take a bit of a dive. Again, probably because of the, um, the isolation and just the weird scenario of not being able to kind of go out and stuff. The main ways I've been kind of dealing with that has been through exercise as well. I wrote it down. I cycled every day mainly because my, my dad went out with me one day and we just decided, I decided that I liked cycling again. And um, I just started building up the, the kilometers and sort of cycling around Glen Office because I couldn't really go anywhere else. Um, obviously because the gym was shut, it meant that I had to improvise. So that was one of the ways I improvised. I managed to drop 24 pounds. So I'm quite chuffed with that. Like for being creative, I find that exercise really inspires that, if not knackers me out. I have a lot of energy. This is actually me at a less energetic day, believe it or not. <laughs> so cycling that really helped um, keep my mood up as well. Obviously there was some, I did some gaming as well. Those are my triangle of interests. Games, exercise, music. And I have hair everywhere. Is, um, I know I didn't get a haircut either, but I was one of the lucky ones who didn't need one. So yeah, I've had overall quite a positive experience. Um, been very lucky. Hi again. So one of the things that I've been doing over the lockdown period, I know a lot of people got into this right at the start, um, but I don't know how many people kept up, was getting into jogging. I've been trying to do three times a week, fairly consistently. Kind of stopped a fair bit in the winter there, just because it was so cold and icy underfoot, it was a bit difficult. But yeah, it was a lot of fun uh, getting into this. I started out with the Couch to 5k app, and I think it was just kind of good for having that kind of structure when we first start out lockdown. You know, 5k three times a week, which is around about 30 minutes or so. I find it really rewarding. Um, it's really fun. Once you've actually achieved your, your 5k, you feel like you've accomplished something. And I feel healthier than I used to. I feel a lot fitter, I feel a lot faster. Um, certainly i um, got a lot more stamina in terms of being able to keep it going. Um, if you'd asked me at the start of lockdown, could I run for 30 minutes? <laughs> uh, the answer would be no. So building up to that has been really, really quite rewarding and I feel, feel good about it. I feel like I've achieved a lot. And if you're interested in getting into running, I can't recommend it highly enough. It'll get you a bit healthier and give you a little bit of structure. Something to enjoy.
So I tried to record this twice. Um, when I'm recording it this way, the sun is directly in my eyes, so it's really hard to see. <laughs> um, I kind of like the backlight that was on the last set of shots, so I'm kind of okay with that. But yeah, it was uh, it was quite something. I'm Katie. Um, this is where I've been spending lockdown. Um, I usually do three jobs. So I'm a children's yoga teacher. I'm also a community artist and I'm a care worker. So I wasn't able to go and do care work while um, lockdown happened, but I was able to carry on teaching yoga on Zoom. Um, usually my community art is in hospitals and care homes, um, so I wasn't able to go there. Um, so for the most part, I was just in this flat um, with my partner Jack and our two dogs. Okay, so first we're going to stretch really wide. Stretch yourself into a great big wishing star. Excellent. Can you slide over to be a shooting star? Very good. Back to wishing star. Shooting star. Wishing star. Now can you fold over and be a folding star? Very good. Back to wishing stars. So I want you to put your little fingers together, the bottoms of your hands and your thumbs to make this lotus flower. It's going to go here at your heart. You're going to breathe in, lift up your lotus flower, close the petals, breathe out, bring it back down. Now let's get our balloon ready. What colour is your balloon? Imagine your balloon, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. Plant a seed, watch it bloom, mountain high, river wide, earth below, open sky, I am peace. Well done. <laughs> So what's the rubber even doing? It's like rain since I got up. In fact, it's still raining. Any idea when uh, we'll be back with gigs and stuff like? Uh, certainly in venues anyway. Uh, it's looking pretty sketch. I'll say it. I've enjoyed lockdown. Lockdown's been good for me. Um, I think in a lot of ways it's probably saved me as well. I think the way my life was pre-lockdown, there was a lot of things wrong. I would never change any of it. I worked my ass off, as did the rest of the team at the Kings, to get that place open, um, to, to keep it open and keep it running and put on events and, and the people I had working around me and the board were all amazing and it was great, it was fantastic. Um, but I was killing myself. My life was that, you know, and uh, 
I'd never seen it for that. I never seen that I needed a break, I never seen that I needed time away, I never seen that oh, I maybe needed to just switch off here and there and then I was never switched off from that. So for me it was a really, really unhealthy experience that I was unaware of, heading for a brick wall. You know, I was only going to break on that path. Um, I, I consider myself to be very fortunate. There's a few people, just a few, that I've heard who cannot wait for the kids to get back to school. And that's fine, I've got kids, I don't know. But other people, oh, homeschooling was this, blah de blah de blah. That's great. I understand, I would hate to do homeschooling. There's not a chance I could do But what about all the time that if you've not been at work, that you've had with the ch children to do other stuff that you would never have had? Does that not outweigh the homeschooling? Yeah? You're not going to get it again. Yeah, I think people sometimes just miss that. And then it's only when it's gone that you kind of go, oh, shit. You know, maybe we should have been out more walks or stuff like that. I don't know, I'm just rambling. You're listening to the rambles of a man on a bike who's sweaty and tired and who put on Facebook Live just to, because he was bored. This is Community Radio from Kirkcaldy. This is K107 FM. Hello everybody. It's John Murray here. Just taking you along to our studio complex. And you can see what is involved in Kirkcaldy Community Radio. K107 FM. Well, good afternoon, welcome along to the programme. This is John Murray with you on K107 FM in our studio live in downtown Kirkcaldy. And I'm here for the next two hours with lots of guests, some business guests and some from the world of entertainment. We continued our programmes just using software and a mixer. We produce programmes from home and many are continuing to do so. So throughout the period from March right up to the present day, we continued with programmes 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. During this lockdown, we've had to really be in our own heads more than we're used to. I've been meditating. I find it really helps me. It helps me calm down and relax and feel a bit more centred and balanced. Do not listen to this recording while driving or operating machinery. Only listen when it's safe to do so when you can safely relax. If wearing glasses, remove them and place them somewhere safe. Take a few moments to allow yourself to begin to relax. Sit or lie in a comfortable position. And when you're ready and feel able to do so, Simply close your eyes as you 
begin to relax, take a few slow, deep breaths, breathing in, relaxation, breathing out any unnecessary tension or unwanted feeling. And feel all your muscles begin to loosen. Relaxing and resting. This is your time to relax. Your time and no one else's. Time to recharge. It doesn't matter if your mind wanders. Drift deeper down into your own inner world, your own inner realities. And thoughts may come and go. Let them go. Imagine them drifting away like clouds in a deep blue sky. Breathing freely and easily. Letting go, feeling so very comfortable now, so relaxed and dressed. Um, I'm here to tell you a story from a different perspective. I have been tested positive with COVID-19. It's been a bit of a Shocking experience, to be honest. Started feeling well after Christmas, um, normal cold. Um, and then on the 2nd of January, my mum phoned me and said that she couldn't smell anything. I was the same, and I went for a test. Um, and it was positive. Symptom-wise, it's like a cold, it's like a normal cold. It, it's something that would go to boots and buy the boots aisle and, and feel better in a week. This, this has been responsible for so many people losing their lives. And the stress. Test protect, being on the phone. Very, very thorough. If anybody's out there wondering if the systems are working, they are working. Very thorough, wanting to know exactly where I'd been, exactly where I'd been, who I'd been with, because I don't know if my parents gave this to me or I gave this to my parents, because my dad has also tested positive. And the the guilt around that is terrific. It's it's quite a shocking text to get through, um, and I'm not saying that to be dramatic. It's that's it, you're, you're positive with this worldwide disease. Everything stops. Um, everything I'd planned for January and February. Gone. On hold until, until I'm better. Um, I'm tired. I feel weak. I want to sleep after every <laughs> couple of hours of being up. Um, I'm lethargic. The worst symptom, though, is stress. I am so worried about this bubble. My family, friend of that are not well. I mean, you could be sitting watching the TV, and but your mind is racing twenty four seven. It's not stopping, and it's because you're sitting with the knowledge that you've got something that. Ambulances are queuing up outside hospitals for. I was really careful. I worked from home. I stayed in for weeks at a time. I got food delivered. I was... All I did was go to local shops. But it's very difficult to rack your brain. You, you know, you just go into, into detective mode. And I thank God every day that my symptoms and my family's symptoms, my friend's symptoms aren't worse. The symptoms I have are very mild. 
I'm getting better, I'm getting better every day. I have more energy. Um, if I still feel tired. If you're able to, stay in. I was really careful, hardly went anywhere. And I got it. So if you're able to stay in the house and get food delivered and do your exercise, whatever it is, if you're comfortable you can do that, stay in. I wouldn't wish this experience on anybody. I really wouldn't. I'm looking forward to the day when this is just a mere memory. One that I learned a lot from. And I'm sitting in a coffee shop having a coffee reading a book. And nobody's wearing a mask. That's what I'm looking forward to. Please stay safe. Um, It's, it's really um, lost all sense of novelty and I think we all need that connection again. That human connection is really important but we need to feel safe when we're doing that. So it will be, um, it will be great when we can all come together again um, and we have barbecues and chat to each other in the streets in a way that we're all a bit nervous of doing just now. I've been absolutely blessed by having an outstanding team of caseworkers and Craig and Combs and Linda, my office manager. Uh, we've had great support from temporary staff and that has really carried us all through that collective um, uh, effort to really help constituents. It, it has been an honour, um, I know that sounds cheesy, but it's been an honour to be responsible uh, for the kind of support that I would like to think most MPs provide to constituents. And I'm quite confident we've been able to get a positive outcome for almost every single one of the thousands of cases we've dealt with in the past year. So that's really been my lockdown and I'm really looking forward to seeing the completed project um, and a pleasure to be a part mm. of it. And um, yeah, it'll be interesting to, to see where we are in the future. Okay, I'm off to get my tea.
lockdown, what do you say? I mean, uh, I could tell you all the, the, the things that I've done to keep busy, uh, which is quite a, quite a few. But lockdown is also the story of all those moments in between. And um, like everyone else, I've had sleepless nights. I've had uh, uh, difficult moments. One of the tips and tricks I've found is complete ignorance. You know, not, not watching the news, not spending my time, you know, deep into what may or may not be happening. These things aren't helpful. All they do is just make you worry. So I've played the ignorant game somewhat. I, I spend an, as much time on social media as I need to, but after that, I, you know, take time for myself. I go for long walks. I'm out on the bike. We play badminton in the in the back garden to uh, to keep fit and healthy as much as you can. I've tried a bit of yoga. That was quite fun, painful. Mostly, I buried myself in my work, which is probably a habit that. Well, it's a habit I have, and I wonder if it's a habit a lot of you creatives out there have as well. I've created a wedding brand for my wedding videos, so I've been working away at you know my website and the social media for that. I've helped make a YouTube channel for my girlfriend's son called Best Brick, which is a Lego channel for people who like Lego. Um, that was quite fun to do, and again, it was just a way to practice using the camera when all other options were kind of out. So I think I've been I've been pretty creative. But that's, as I said, it's not to say that it hasn't been somewhat boring and long and a bit of a journey. There are there are other times where I've stayed up late browsing online, just thinking and not knowing what's happening. I think the biggest lesson is to keep in touch with your friends, um, keep a line of communication with everyone, get in touch with people you haven't got in touch with for a long time. Um, and, you know, time passes quick, especially as you get older. We're all in the same boat. I know that's been said a thousand times before, but it is true. And uh, hopefully, you know, this time next year, life is, well, I say, hopefully, hopefully in a few months, life is back to normal. Drink lots of coffee. Hello. It's spring. I'm sitting in the sunlight at the beach. It's beautiful. I'm COVID free. I am fitter, thinner. I walked here this morning, which is a bit of a miracle in itself. I'm feeling as we the restrictions ease. I'm feeling a sense of gratitude lights the end of the tunnel. When we see people at some point soon, we're going to be able to hug them. That's important. And when we do hug them, we'll remember how important it was. I'm so glad to have been here with you all. A year ago in March, like everywhere, having to close was a really emotional and really tough time and having to put a video on social media was like, oof, no idea where we would be, no idea how long it was going to go, you know, if the charity would survive and all the rest of it was, was very, it was tough, it was hard. It's amazing to be a year on and uh, to let you know that that's still there, the project's still going and hopefully with the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, it'll not be long and we'll be open and we'll have some stuff going on and, and it'll be good. But a year, a year, where has it went? I've learnt so much about myself, very comfortable uh, being in my own time now. I've learnt a lot about myself, I've learnt I don't procrastinate quite as much as I thought I did. I didn't quite fall in love with the jigsaws like a lot of people did. I purchased jigsaws, but they're still in the box. i learnt a lot of different things. I've lost weight, uh, close to two stone just in this year. Um, 2021 so that's been great as well walks got out on walks everywhere I've lived in Kirkcaldy for 42 years apart from the odd breakaway I didn't know half the places I've walked and the trails that are here and different areas are different in the parks and stuff like that and it's been amazing to discover all them and uh, got veggies planted for this year because we built um, veggie patches and stuff through the summer on social media um, I managed to avoid most of the negativity and keep away from that. 
Um, very positive person and I like to keep that kind of mental um, positivity. And I know at times it's really hard and it's been really tough and, and the uncertainty and job losses and, and everything that we've had going on has been, has been really difficult. I've, I've been pretty lucky in that sense, uh, being able to keep that mental, positive mental attitude. Oh, positive mental attitude, there we go. Never even meant to drop that, but that's good. I got involved with a Trace Up Challenge to raise awareness for mental health, which is something that is really close to me. Um, being touched by mental health in the past myself, so. Uh, men's mental health is really important as well to me. So it uh, ended up being 100 days, which I loved. Uh, a couple of people reached out looking for a bit of help and a bit of support. They felt encouraged by the fact that every day I was posting up a video doing 25 press-ups, which was, you know, it was nothing. They got um, the conversations from the professionals that they needed and the guys are still here. And, uh, you know, maybe it's a bit bold to say they might not have been, but who knows, you know. Lockdown for me, or the pandemic, has been inspirational, educational, and it's allowed me to find myself. Sorry to everybody that has uh, been touched by this and who has lost a friend or a loved one throughout this time. Um, thankfully, I'm very lucky to be in a position where I've not, and uh, I think it's really important to acknowledge that as well, that obviously people have lost so much. Share the love for all the local businesses, wherever you are, wherever you're watching this video from, um, keep it local. Um, these guys have survived through uh, this and uh, they need your help more than ever when we do get open again and get moving. When the King's Live Lounge um, and the King's Theatre Project all gets up and running again and opens its doors and stuff like that, I hope you are all going to come down and say hello. And yeah, stay safe, look after each other and uh, I'll see you all soon, hopefully. I think at this point in time, more than ever, I should be kind to myself and all of us should be kind to ourselves. So if you've lost your focus, if you've lost your structure, if you feel like you've lost your purpose and, and everything sucks because you need a structure to function, and I totally understand that, you know, I think that we are being a little bit too hard on ourselves. It's okay to feel lost. It's okay to be frustrated and not having a structure anymore. It's okay to feel like school or work are kind of slipping away and everything is worrying, but it's just, you know, some things just need, some things are just not priority right now. That's okay. Health is priority. Loved ones are priority. And, you know, keeping ourselves a saint through this time is a priority. I hope you're all doing okay. I hope you're doing fine. I hope you stay safe. And I know it's really hard, but take care of yourself in whatever way you see fit. And yes, turning off notifications, turning off the news is a way to take care of yourself. Everything will be fine. I love you. Take care. Bye. I think I'm going to look back on this last year and think it was one of the best of my life. It's not been easy, it's been a struggle, it's been hard not seeing people, it's been hard not hugging people that you love. But I'm standing here in the sun and there's light and I've just walked three miles to get here because I was able to and that is a, that's a gift. I hope everyone else has had a a reasonable lockdown. Um, it's a challenging time for us all. We'll all have to stay resilient, we'll all have to stay safe, we'll all have to stay kind to each other and we'll all have to stay strong. Being able to share stories uh, of how we've coped and how we felt and things that we've done. I think it's important to remember to stay connected to each other. Believe that we can get out of this. Pausing and slowing down, which is what this lockdown has helped us do. Um, can be very beneficial to our health. Lockdown has been a really strange experience. Um, we've all had to adapt and change. Our lives have been totally different, but I'm really grateful to all the people who kept in touch and who made lockdown a bit more of a bearable experience. I've had overall quite a positive experience. Um, been very lucky. That's my experience of lockdown. Um, it was a positive one. Challenging, difficult, 
but quite positive. There is light at the end of the tunnel. We are heading towards the end of this. Thank you so much to everyone who took part in this project. It's been an amazing experience seeing what everyone's been up to and I've really enjoyed hearing all your stories and putting this video together. We're through the worst of it. I am very, very sure of this. I hope to see a lot of you again in person sometime soon. Nothing stays the same forever, so don't lose hope. Keep going. I'm just looking forward to what comes next and I can't wait to see you all soon. We finally look like we're heading out of this and uh, I cannot wait. Take care.